What is going on, YouTube? This is Matt. Now, this is Mentorship Monday on the road. I'm super excited. I love technology. I'm grateful that we've got technology and allows that I can do cool stuff like this. Like join you guys for a Mentorship Monday session while I'm driving on the road. I'm not driving. I'm riding on the road. On my way to North Carolina. We're heading down here to go look at an apartment building. Stay tuned on YouTube and on Facebook for lots of updates on the apartment building we're going to go look at. And most importantly, stay tuned to Insiders because there's lots of updates there. Super exciting deal. And we're putting together a little YouTube series about this deal and about what it's going to be like. We want to get those questions answered and to give you guys some content so you guys can continue to raise your real estate investing game, even though me and my man here, Justin, are hey! traveling. Wow! <laughs> there he is. What's going on, Adrian? We do the Rocky Yell. Adrian. Yo, Adrian! Adrian! What's up, man? How are you? What's up, man? I'm all right. How are you doing? Me and two of my coworkers uh, live and work in New York City. We want right. to start investing in Newark, New Jersey. As far as how, how will we go about setting up a three-person LLC to protect all three of us uh, on the investing side and um, like the language that should be put into it and uh, you know stuff like that. Okay, cool. So first of all, uh, I believe I believe that your desire to invest in Newark is a is a good pick because Newark, as they say, in some ways, and really all in North Jersey, Adrian, to become like the sixth borough. Um, as they widen up those train line, those train tunnels going in and add, a, I think another train tunnel going in, going to Manhattan. Um, yeah. North Jersey is going to become the slightly lower price point, but still thriving, you know, borough of Manhattan. I mean, for folks who can't afford to live in downtown Manhattan or can't afford to live in Waynesburg or want, or want something called a yard or maybe want something called like a little bit more square footage and not live in a 300 square foot box or something like that, they're going to yeah. want it and still be a part of the growth of Manhattan and part of the economy that is Manhattan, right? So I think your pick is correct. And New York is going to be a big part of that, number one. LLC-wise, fairly straightforward. It, uh, setting up an LLC, you can do part of it yourself. You can just, and this is not just New Jersey, you can just Google setting up an LLC in, in certain state, right? And you're going to get a few spam sites that are going to try and, like, get you to give, you know, pay them, you know, a couple hundred bucks for doing this for you. And scroll down a little bit, and you'll find something that's typically a link to the state's website. So the state of New Jersey, it's like nj.gov forward slash treasury or something like that, right? Okay. You can set up the LLC, and register. all you're really looking to do is register with the state, and it costs you about 125 bucks, I believe, in New Jersey. That's number one. Number two, you can go to the IRS website, give yourself an EIN number, okay? Those, with those two items, you, that you now have an LLC, but that's not really what you need. What you really need is an operating agreement. Setting up the LLC is easy. You got your two buddies, two, it's you and two friends are going to be doing this. What you need to get clear on is what each of y'all are going to do, okay? What you're going to do. What you're going to do and how much you're going to put in if you're going to put any cash in and how much equity and what you're going to get for what you do, right? Some people would say roll of gold and compensation, right? Put in that. You find that for each of the three of you. And then most importantly, define how the LLC gets unwound, how it gets exited from, something like that. Just, just yeah, that's, jump a, in. that's a really great point. Listen, the, the operating agreement is really the key to this. Like, like Matt said, you can set up that LLC in 10 minutes or less on the, on the website, but the operating agreement is going to list who's contributing, so how much are you putting in, what your roles are and responsibilities. And then again, that's what, how do you leave this thing? What if one of you wants to buy out? What if one of you uh, doesn't hold up to their responsibilities that you're defining? So these are uncomfortable conversations to have yeah. because you're all excited right now and you're all thinking, yes, yeah, we're all going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But then one of you might, you know, get distracted by, by another project or another partner or just not, not be into real estate. And you need to provide a path forward so the other partners can, can work with, with each of you to, to work your way out. And, and if you're going to be business with people, you got to get used to having difficult conversations. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a great time to, to practice that and, and to sit down and Think through the life cycle and how are you distributing profits? Because your company hopefully will make some money, but you, are you taking all your profits out? Are you holding on to them? What are you doing with those reserves? Like all every aspect of the business, you've got to think about what's coming in, what's going out, what, how you're spending, how you're investing, are you investing in marketing? Who's been the final decision maker? If there's three of you, is it majority rules? Is it two first one? How do you how do you got how does this company make decisions? Is there a CEO who is responsible? So that that's what you got to talk through. Line it all up and, and have those hard conversations. But at the end of the yeah. day, your LLC will be stronger. And I, I'll tell you from my experience, and I don't want to speak for Matt, but similar. Having, having
having that stuff lined up ahead of time will save you a ton uh, of headache and, and, and a hard conversation now. It's way harder when you're talking about, you know, money in the bank account and yeah, the properties man. you have to untangle and everything else. So have it now before you get into it. Good stuff. All so, right. uh, Adrian, man, I think you're, you're set up for success. You're picking the right market, I think. I think the timing is well. Uh, right now, New York's a little bit, you know, the market's, I think, questionable teetering a little bit, you know, given, how, given all the all the corona crazy and everything else going on. Sure. So I think right now is the time to scale up. Um, and that, I think that you're... Uh, you know, as long as you and your partners all bring a unique ability to the table, I think you guys are going to be successful. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're trying to be. Cool. It's good stuff, Justin. Yeah, it's yeah. really all about partnerships. And, and uh, when, you're, when you're partnering, it's really about setting things up the right way. Uh, yeah. And, and, and yeah. your partnerships yeah. and your structures and everything like and that. And it's hard because it's uncomfortable because your buddies, you're getting into a business and everyone's excited. We've got Jerry coming online. Hi, hey, Jerry. How are you? Oh, Good, how are you guys doing? Great, yeah, it's great man. to be a Good part of your first you. first Road Warrior experience. I'm glad to be a part Absolutely. of it. So today, my, my question revolves around a cost segment segmentation study. I had, I yeah. consulted with a local tax attorney or tax uh, consultant, and they recommended a cost study, cost segregation study. So I went out and I, I contacted a couple of more specialty cost segregation companies, and they gave me some estimates. And the cost seems to be about the same. I've got seven buildings. The cost of the study is going to be about $12,000. But they're, yep. they're talking about bringing forward about 10% of my overall portfolio net worth in terms of depreciated uh, accel uh, accelerated depreciation. Have you guys done cost segregation studies? Do you think it's worth it? Uh, I'm kind of debating. It looks like it's worth it. My other con concern was also kind of on the back end. Uh, in terms of uh, depreciation, recapture taxes, that kind of thing. So there's a lot to it, needless to say. Yeah, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot to cost seg. So we've done we've done cost seg um, on a lot of property. Uh, so I'm happy to share my experience with it. Um, we got we did it on a 7.7 .7 million dollar property. We got 1.5 million in write off. Wow. Um, in that, so we got just over 20 percent uh, wow. on, on the. So um, yeah, so it sounds good. Um, but the problem with that. It was almost too much. So yeah. I talked to my CPA, um, and we actually didn't take all of it, mm. right? Because he was like, this is likely an audit. This, this could be an audit trigger um, to go in and show up with this much depreciation in one year. In addition, you're going to, I mean, do you have investors? Uh, in no. Your, or is it you? Or no, you, oh, you don't. Okay. It's just the um, two of us. Got it. So for us, th this was a syndication that we have that we have out in Kentucky with like 40 investors, right? So oh, wow. my CPA brought up something interesting. He was like, you know, if you go give your investors this much of a write-off in one year, um, they are either going to expect it or they're, they're, it's going to give them such an enormous windfall in a year, and then they're going to be left, you know, without much of a, of a tax windfall in the following years that you're kind of feast or famine in these guys. So what we decided to do is we took only the five-year write-off items. So we took about half of that $1.4 million in write-offs in the first year. And then we decided to space the longer stuff. Because in a cost seg, um, and again, I'll explain cost seg a little more for those that don't know what it is. I'll, I'll explain it briefly if you can help me explain it here in a second, Gary. But um, what, uh, what the, the, it breaks down, there's five-year life stuff, and there's longer life stuff, and then there's the dirt, like the bricks and mortar stuff that's 27 and a half years. So we took the short-term stuff all in a year, and then the longer stuff we're going to spread out over a, over a longer period of time. Yeah. Um, we didn't want that. I mean, you kind of, it's, it's kind of like a big, enormous shot in the arm, and then you got nothing left. Right. You just right. it all at once. So you got to, I would decide what you're going to do with that enormous write off you're going to get. It sounds really cool to get that big of a write off, but then you've actually written off a lot. You've written off for us with 20% of our value. Right. 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 So, so now what? You yeah. know, I can't cut off my land at 10%. So I'm now left with 70% of my building value to write out right now over 27 and a half years, minus some of the longer term stuff that's in this case. So you kind of push a lot, you kind of push all in up front. You know, um, may I ask, what is your long term plan with these properties? Well, I'm not sure. I, and so what I did this morning was I calculated out if I sold them in 2025. Because I was concerned about the depreciation recapture tax, which is at ordinary income rates. So, what would that impact have on me then? Uh, 
I did a little spreadsheet. I'm not sure if I got the numbers right, but it looked like it's, it doesn't have a huge impact. But so and it, our goal is to keep these properties for at least six to seven years from, from this point. Yeah. Okay. You want to hold them for a bit. That's yeah. why, that's why I think that you're going to hold them for a little while. Um, I'm not challenging what you said, but definitely talk to the CPA because I'm, okay. I'm not a CPA. Yeah. Um, but So, so in terms of like our current income, uh, we don't have a lot, and I'm, we're offsetting a lot of my wife's W two with with our real estate losses. So, then I guess the, the the depreciation I pull forward becomes a carryover loss for the next couple of years, right? So then, yeah, I mean that, that makes it slightly different for us, but it's still we're able to, to, to carry that loss forward, which will benefit us. But you're a, you file uh, you're professional on your tax return. Are you filing yourself as a real estate professional? Yes. Okay. So, like, education piece on that. I'm a real estate professional. You're probably filing as a real estate professional, too. Um, because it's our profession, uh, you're allowed to carry that forward. I mean, like, when, when I was um, first getting started, I pulled my wife into a lower tax bracket uh, yeah. because of my real estate efforts. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was able to, being, like, filing with the IRS as a real estate professional really unlocks the door to full access to a lot of the benefits that owning real estate gets. Um, without that, with if, you, if all you got is W two, you are limited on how much you can pass through, and you really uh, using your real estate loss to pull down your W two doesn't happen. So you only do that if you're a real estate real estate professional. I was right. going there, uh, so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so I was going to ask you why you wanted to do this. Now I get you could actually pull down your wife's income quite a bit, yeah. um, and just and and do carry forward losses. Um, and those carry forward losses would eventually apply to the gain of the sale of the building if you didn't consume all those losses uh, before you sold. Oh, uh, I got you. They okay. kind of seem you know. Uh, I, I would, I would actually want to model it out in, in a spreadsheet because it sounds like you've already got a lot of depreciation and you're already pulling down for income pretty significantly. That's right. And, and That's right. And it. And so, my question is, how much extra value are you by doing the cost seg? How much extra do you think you're going to be able to write off? Uh, and what is that gap? So if you're able to take it down to nothing and carry forward and it's worth it because now you're paying no taxes, well, great. Um, but, but actually model it out so you can see the difference okay. because yeah. it seems like you're already being pretty successful at, at offsetting your income. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, that's uh, right. And Good one point. last thing, when you can, you also got to think about, dear, what you want to do when you sell these properties. So are you, are you 1031 ing Are you going to just cash out, take your chips, and leave the table? Or what, what are you going to do? Have you thought about that yet? 
Uh, not to that detail level, no. I mean, we, we, we've done some 1031s to get to this level, which has been great. Of course, the, the plan would be to kick the can down the road, so that might be part of it. It just kind of depends where we are in five years, really. Not to be and, and not to be too morbid, but but the best tax advantage, the best tax move you can do is to hold in perpetuity and and, and pass it along to your descendants. Yeah. Um, because it uh, the cost, as I understand, the cost basis resets. Um, right. When you uh, when you pass it down line, so um, so they say defer, 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 die. You know? right. Right, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and not yeah. that that's not that anybody wants wants any of his debt <laughs> or anything like that, but that's that's kind of like that. That's the best tax leverage you got. Well, nobody um, gets out alive, right? No, 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 <laughs> things to it. So, um, well, well, that's great, Chair. Well, listen, you're you're uh, in, in what I call a, a good. You're in a good conundrum, where right? it sounds like you've only got positives at left or your right. So I, I commend you. But might I ask how many units is this, is in this portfolio we're talking about? So it's it's only uh, ten units, seven single families, and three duplexes. So, but it's California, which is why the valuation's crazy. Yeah, of course, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, everything is bigger I out that here. Reason. For that reason, that might be a good reason to do it because you'll probably just because of the dollars it'll get unlocked uh, through depreciation uh, yeah. would be a good, a good uh, reason to do it. Even though the unit count's not that high, right. uh, it's still probably a good dollar a dollar write off to get. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jerry, I uh, message me after this. I'd be very happy to introduce you to the person who did our cost segregation study. Oh, great. And uh, you can absolutely talk you through you know, the pros and cons and details. Yeah. That. Hey, That's excellent. Great, Hey, that'd be great, Justin. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Excellent. No problem. Yeah, um, Jerry, great. thank you for your question. Looking forward to seeing you over on Insider. Just a reminder, everybody watching here, when you submit questions to help me at neurosisgroup.com and you make it here on the air with uh, Justin and I, that gives you a one-month membership to Insider. It's free. Just a thank you for coming on the air with us. So, uh, Jerry, thank you for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you on Insiders. We love uh, having seasoned real estate investors like yourself on Insider just to help us aid the community. Looking forward to seeing your comments and posts there um, and that uh, being an active member. So thank you again for your question. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks. Drive safe. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Cool. Well, hey, one last, thank you guys for watching. One last time. We're probably going to jump over to Insiders right now in a couple of minutes. Um, so uh, those of you guys that are Insiders members, uh, go over to Insiders now because we're going to start talking about this deal. We'll want to go see what we get to go a little more clubs off and throw out a little more information on it. Uh, if you guys are not members, go to Derosa Group right now, derosagroup.com, and just join us at forward slash insiders. Um, you can join the insiders community. It's uh, 24 bucks a month. Very reasonable for the education and exposure that you get. Um, and it's really an inside look into a growing real estate company that is the Group. So I uh, hope you guys can join us. Uh, Justin, final thoughts? That's it, man. Uh, I love doing this stuff on your own, man. It's great. We, cool. The tech works. So that's, the that's tech good. works. We did it. Woo! Oh, yay! All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank hey. you for watching. We'll probably be in the comfort of our offices, uh, you know, so. and online normally next uh, next week. But thanks for joining us on the road. I uh, appreciate you guys as always being with us. So we always say, have, have a great, great profitable week. week.